And it's time for Off the Press. It's uh, the segment of The Breakfast where we have a quick review on the stories making headlines across the whole country uh, this morning. I'm still Osaugi Ogbonwa. And uh, with me this morning, uh, Mr. Kayode Ladendi, a senior news editor here at Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'm hoping that it's going to be a, a very interesting conversation. Earlier, I was speaking with um, Mr. Achike Chude and trying to link the Sudan and Mali um, crisis, you know, and I was asking uh, if, he, if he felt, you know, it was a similar thing going on in both countries. Um, the people of, you know, certain African countries feeling like they feel like they needed to liberate themselves. Um, so let, let's quickly start with that. Do you feel that Malians or the people in Mali um, are feeling the hunger to liberate themselves of bad leadership. I, I, I like that clarification. When you say Malians, what <laughs> <laughs> do you think you're talking about Naira Mali? Okay, basically, I, I think, um, I, I, I don't know. I remember the first question you asked him, whether he expected this. So yeah. For me, I, I'm all, also one of those people who believe in that school of thought, that uh, cool is a thing of the past. You remember it happened in Haiti and the whole world condemned it. Yeah. Anything that has to do with military takeover seems to be a thing of the past. But it's sad to see that happen in West Africa, to be precise. So, uh, I, I, for me, maybe that was the solution they needed. But uh, I think the Jonathan-led um, committee did a good job. They tried to persuade them. But I think the people said, we are tired of this man. We are tired of this administration. Let us have a new government. But I don't think that uh, celebration is, is justified. Because do you know what the military have in store wow. over time? We hardly see them leave power immediately or leave power as they promised. Yeah. You will see them say, oh, in three months, we are going to have a civilian government in place. And the three months will turn to six months. Six months will turn to one year. One year will turn to three years. And sometimes they become, you know, uh, a tenureless uh, administration. So I have my fears. I have my doubts over this military takeover. AU definitely is going to come hard on them. Uh, United Nations is going to come hard on them. Uh, we're yet to know whether there's any form of backing for this military internationally. So I, I sincerely believe that, good, the people want a change of regime, but not a military takeover. Yeah. So uh, in all entirety, I personally do not support a military takeover. But uh, the president has resigned. Let's hope that um, that resignation was yeah. not purely under duress, because definitely it was under duress, but I think it's condemnable. All right. We're going to see some of these stories come up um, very likely on the punch this morning, because that's where we're starting with on Off the Press. It says, uh, um, of course, here, on loan, crisis hits reps panel, ministry summoned over sovereignty clause. Soldiers arrest embattled Malian president and prime minister. And citizens celebrate, which we just spoke about. Um, also, man flees after allegedly abducting and raping a Lagos fashion designer at gunpoint. How Lagos boat helmsman caused 12 passengers' death over 300 naira. And um, of course, you know, your state governor, Shea Makinde, orders the rearrest of a fleeing or your serial killer, which that's one story that I still can't wrap my head around. Hmm how um, a serial killer escapes while taking a, his bath. Um, 774,000 jobs. Reps reject uh, slots. Kayamo dismisses protest. And also lawmakers probe failed $500 million Nigerian satellite contract and 180 million Naira insurance. Lawmakers compile tribunal records as Diri appeals judgment. And um, what else can we find here? No court order stop the registration of 22 parties, says INEC. The last one I would be squeezing in from the Punch newspapers this morning. Oyetola pardons 962 demoted Oshun civil servants. Um, of course, and a lawyer detained uh, for five months by the DSS gets two million naira bail. So it's so much. So much, you can, so much. You, you but can... I think two jumped at me, the issue of the serial killer yeah. in Oyo State. Um, it's sad that uh, when this serial killer was missing, it will shock you that it took 
the public to make the outcry before the police now confirmed it that this serial killer truly escaped from their custody. Uh, whatever this serial, whoever this serial killer is, this is just a 90-year-old boy, and I don't imagine him outsmarting the police. I think the police need to make some kind of explanation. We don't need a governor for the police to do their job. It, it's sad. This was a case of a series of killings yeah. in one local government in Oyo State. If you remember, we even had students being killed in a very, very gruesome manner. And now that this person has been apprehended, how come? This person should have been treated as a first-class criminal. So how come did it happen? You know, it just reminds me of the kind of movies we see from time to time. And I thought this only happens in movies. But whichever way, I think this person should be apprehended and justice should be served on time. And let's not have any story that touches. Uh, that is one. Then on the reps, uh, uh, this was an issue that we even discussed yesterday on Plus Politics. Yep. And it's, it's disturbing. You know, that tells you that uh, there is more to the face of between the members of the reps, the House of Reps, and the Minister of State for uh, uh, Labor and Employment. Now you can see what is playing out. It is about the slots given to them. I recall that they were promised that 15% of the old uh, 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 numbers that are going to be compiled. But now for them to hear that 30 out of 1,000 is just their slot, got them really angry. But why is the... Why is it that it is only the minority that is speaking this time around? Is it that the whole issue has gone partisan? Because when uh, 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 Kiyama was being um, confronted, it was the whole house. It was the committee and the whole house that stood against him. Has it gone partisan now? And even if it hasn't gone partisan, what is the merit behind PDP's outcry too? that let this thing not be a partisan affair. So you, it, do you feel that there might be other details that we're not aware of yet? And basically, I, I, I would be fooling myself to say that it's not going to have serious party coloration from experience. Uh, these are things that uh, politicians don't take for granted when it's time to give what seemingly look like a reward for the loyalty of their party members. They find every form to do that. But it is not fair on you and I. It is not fair on every Nigerian because the money that it will be used is not from party dues. It's not from contributions from the party. It's from the taxpayers. Yeah. So, And these taxpayers do not have any partisanship so to say, so let there be some form of meritocracy in the selection of the members, I mean, in the selection of the beneficiaries. However, party, without deceiving ourselves, should have some kind of interest in choosing it, but it shouldn't be as high as 80% that PDP alleged. Uh, aren't there government agencies that can handle this there is. The, 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 the Nigerian, um, um, uh, what's it called now, NDE, Directorate of Employment, is having that statutory function to do it. But what we're saying is NDE in their various states, in their various local government, um, we need that state selection committee that has been formed. So this state selection committee is where the crisis started from, that the choices of this selection committee seems uh, a partisan in nature. However, I do not want to criticize government style because if you look at it deeply, if you're going to get the poorest of the poor, you're going to get artisans, you will need the market women. Yeah. You will need the NURTW. That's where the name MC Luomo came up yeah. in Lagos or being part of the committee. Uh, uh, it's unfortunate that here in Lagos, the, the daughter of the APC leader is the Yaoloja, and uh, the LUTRG of you is not now that we know it's partisan. So that's the reality we face. But however, the general interest should be that of people who deserve this allocation of uh, jobs and right. not purely on partisan level. All right, let's move to the uh, Tribune this morning and see what we can also quickly find. Um, over there, as many of them. Uh, Reps to Griel, AGF, and uh, Finance Minister over a sovereignty clause. Dollar scarcity worsens, forces the Naira down. 
In Edo State PDP and Presidency trade words over Oshio Mole's arrest talk in video. Interesting, actually. Carrington advised me not to return to Nigeria during Abacha days, says from President Chulushego Basenjo. And uh, Northwest and Northeast bandits migrating to Nasarawa. Gov uh, the governor raises alarm. Also on the uh, Tribune this morning, Mali president and prime minister arrested by soldiers. Uh, Makinde demands rearrest of SKP murder suspect and also rumbling in judiciary over seniority. CGN succession um, intrigues also. Um, I think I will stop here for the Tribune and see what we can quickly rush through as quickly as possible. I, I think the, the boldest prince there talks about the reps to greet LGF. I think that's yeah. where the reps ought to have directed their energy right from day one because um, those clauses definitely should have been seen, must have been seen yeah. by legal minds and the, the, the chief... Uh, custodian of that is the Minister of Justice at the as the Attorney General of the Federation. So uh, probably they are directing their arsenal at the right place now. The Minister of Transportation is responsible for the implementation. But if you're dealing with a clause, if you're dealing with who agrees with the signing of the contract, it should be the Minister of Finance, it should be the AGF. But however, I, I mean, just a bit worried what we seek to achieve. I've asked experts, and they've said that uh, it might be too late to rejig the contract, or except the, 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 the person now, I mean, the, China gov I mean, the Chinese government, China government now terminates the contract, which has been the fear of the Minister of Transportation. His own fear is, why are you just talking now? This real project that's commenced, uh, um, so many parts in the north have been fixed. Why should it be now that we are going to have Lagos Ibado and we are having Lagos Calabar that this issue of debate is coming up? But it is important that um, even if we have missed it this time around, we should be more circumspect when we are signing our contracts. And those two uh, uh, public officers probably will throw more light on yeah. what the International Convention is when it comes to uh, signing uh, an international treaty like this kind of uh, loan that we have. Okay, let's also quickly talk about the um, Oshomale, of course, with regards to those state of video um, that, that the PDP is speaking about. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on how that you know, played out? I, I, I think uh, that's very critical, and it's something that uh, must be seriously investigated. And if found not to be ambiguous in any form, justice should be allowed to take its course. The issue of electoral violence is quite disturbing. I'm very, very passionate about this because I've been a victim of electoral violence. I've been threatened with guns on the field while covering elections. And uh, it's so sad that when you cry out, that's, that is always the end of it. And sometimes you're luckier because you are a journalist. People get to make noise and probably you get police intervention. Uh, maybe if not late. But what about those people that are killed from time to time? Yeah. You hardly have elections without some kind of carnages. You hardly have election without some kind of death. And you see people get into power as if nothing went wrong. Uh, you hardly have elections and you see people get into power and nothing happens. So if people make such kind of dangerous statements, make such kind of threats and it's proven to be true, please, this is the time to say, everyone is equal before the law. This is time to prove that um, these thugs, sometimes when they are arrested, uh, people have sent them. People have given them these weapons. People have paid them to do yeah. all these things. And we hardly hear about the senders. It's just the sent that gets slightly punished, if not even punished at all. Okay, all right. The Nation newspapers is what we are going to be looking at next. And, of course, I can already see that uh, 774,000 uh, jobs is you know, still all over the place. It says 774,000 public work uh, jobs. PDP lawmakers reject slots. Minister says allocation is a mere privilege. Nigerians will be beneficiaries. Marking day to police, rearrest, killer suspect now. And um, also on the nation this morning, Edo Ondo 2020, Okumbo to citizens, our dream state is possible. PDP foiling religious tension in Edo alleges the APC as the teachers endorsed the governor for re-election. Also, police probe dirty fight between Ohakim and a woman.
ASU seeks visitation partner for Unilag as the federal government plans 3.1 trillion for debt servicing in 2021. And lastly, also on the, the issues in Mali, President and Prime Minister arrested in Mali mutiny. All right, uh, with the time that we have, we can quickly rush through. Okay, the, uh, uh, for me, I'm interested in Unilag saga. And uh, what ASU has called for is quite uh, important, even when ASU has some kind of uh, very slim hope yeah. about what uh, the federal government will do, because for the pro-chancellor to be so unequivocal and uh, for a new vice-chancellor to be appointed, it will be... It will be delusional to say that the federal government has no hand in it. And uh, if they are calling for federal government, it, may, it might just mean that um, let's try our best. Let's see what we can do to see whether the federal government will have a different uh, 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 attitude towards this. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm just a bit worried to see how the new VC will survive, how it will rule when um, the Congress, talking about the ASU, talking about the Nsanu, that's the senior staff, yeah. talking about all the junior staff, you know, rising to the occasion to say that we stand with the ousted uh, VC. But I hope it's not going to be like what we see in politics, where people just forgive and move on and accept the new leadership. They all cow, they all get scared and say, let's, let's flow with the new administration. I hope that's not the case we will see. Yeah. But... Um, Maybe in a few minutes' time, we understand that Plus TV Africa is monitoring the case, and our correspondent is right there uh, in Unilag. The, the new acting VC is about to address the media, if it's not addressing the media as we speak, to also give us an update. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. Let's see whether he has gotten some kind of backup from uh, the rest this, of this the This is not very community. common in you know, in the university communities you know, across Nigeria. You don't get to hear about VCs being thrown out. I, I, saw, I saw an article, and I'm trying to juggle my memory to confirm whether it is true, but it's likely to be true, because I remember that uh, uh, the former VC back in to about 20 years ago, that's a Professor Jelili Omotola, I mean, Omotola, is it Omotola? Jelili, I think it's Omotola, uh, was also ousted in a controversial manner. And uh, the, uh, the drama behind that is that that was also uh, orchestrated by the pro-chancellor then, that's uh, uh, Afe Babalola, who was, who was also son. And uh, so it's like history repeating itself. But like you said, it's not common. It's not a common trend. Uh, VC usually finish their tenure. And if they have issues, it's usually the Senate, the other governing council that usually orchestrate it and not just the chancellor. The chancellor is more of a ceremonial position. So is the chancellor overstepping his bounds? Uh, that seems to be what is playing out here. Okay. Uh, we can, there's also a story in the nation that speaks about uh, the federal government, um, of course, uh, talking of, of about 3.1 trillion naira for debt servicing. Uh, it says the federal government plans 3.1 trillion for debt servicing in 2021. And, and I'm bringing this up because we have uh, just, you know, about a minute or two left, you know, on uh, off the press this morning. But I, I want your thoughts on where we we are currently with regards to our, you know, debt, um, how, you know, we, we might still be struggling to pull funds together to pay back the debt that we, you know, currently um, have in our revenue as a nation isn't really, really improving. We're still hovering, you know, at, at very poor figures with regards to revenue and GDP. And so how can we survive economically if we have such huge debts and still have a lot of um, uh, bills to pay as a nation? You know, um, for us, uh, we agree with the government that uh, borrowing is normal, but uh, what do you borrow for? And government keeps explaining to us that they are borrowing for infrastructure. And we ask, where are the infrastructure that you talk about? And they keep telling us that uh, it is about our interest. How do you intend to pay back this money? These are issues that um, is so worrying. Uh, but I, I, I don't know what to say because uh, it appears uh, successive governments are less concerned. Uh, I've listened to a governor, I won't mention the state, who was saying that, excuse me, it's my own job to get this job done. Yep. And how it is paid back is none of my business. And this is someone who was going to live in a few years from that time that he made that statement. 
In other words, let successive generations bear the brunt. I just want to get the job done. So, but I think it's not just about getting the job done. How important is what you're borrowing for? You cannot just keep throwing at us that it is for infrastructure yeah. and we are still battling with issues. We pay our taxes, we, we pay all the necessary things we should pay, and we can't enjoy good road, we can't enjoy good uh, uh, electricity and some basic amenities that we're supposed to enjoy. So uh, I think we should have a caution. We should match the break because as far as this institutions are concerned, they will continue to borrow you as long as you, you sign those clauses, you sign those things, and they would definitely not be the loser. Yeah. And it's too bad if we'll be crying for debt cancellation again. It's, it's interesting to watch. And of course, uh, if you look at our medium-term expenditure framework, uh, fiscal strategy paper, it's just not looking good what the figures you know, are like currently. Um, we're not making enough. Our revenue hasn't improved. Our revenue you know, seems to be dropping. The Naira is also not doing you know, so well. Sure. Um, and at the same time, we're having to take so much out of you know, our annual budget to pay back you know, debts. Um, while still borrowing more. So it's just not a good look. But thank oh, you anyway, sure. Mr. Kayade Ladende, for joining in, for stepping in, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. It's my pleasure. And that's all we have uh, for uh, Off the Press this morning. Thank you very much for staying with us. You can look forward to more of the same on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. The news continues with news on the hour after the break. Stay with us. <laughs>